Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another full breakdown video for you. Today I'm going to be doing the New Orleans Saints. Now this is going to be part one. If you want to see part two, make sure you hit the like button and I'll release that tomorrow. Part one is going to be mostly the eye form formations, the pistol formations, things like that. Tomorrow will mostly be the shotgun formations. So uh, if you want to see that, like I said, hit the like button. I had to break this one up into two days worth of videos. So Saturday, Sunday, a full Saints weekend. The Saints playbook is probably my most popular. It's the one that I personally use the most so it's definitely in my opinion my best so like i said hit the like button for that other than that uh like i said if you guys want to see more free ebooks like this i try to put out one a month uh make sure you hit the like button and let me know in the comment section i want to do defense next so next month will probably be either the jets defense or the Patriots defense so let me know which one you prefer and other than that let's go and let's get right into the video next up we got the stretch alert x looky so here we go we can we can throw this ball back against the grain um, as you can see, I might be able to get outside, <laughs> but you can see, I mean, it's just a stretch play with a pass play attached to it. You just have to hold X if you want to pass instead of running stretch. It's best if, if there's, a, you know, if you got a man coverage, obviously running to this side won't have a cornerback. It's, well, not really. That's not true. So, I mean, this running to this side would make the most sense if you have uh, the outside edge. Uh, other than that, like I said, I mean, throwing back across your body, a, a decent play. They're both good plays. It's just you just have to, to see, you know, what the defense is reacting to. You just have to see how the defense is reacting for the most part. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, if they're dropping back like it's a pass play, you typically want to run it. If they're dropping down like it's a run play, you typically want to pass to the, to the receiver. Like I said, right here, I mean, just did it a little bit late. Right, let's do that one more time. Be shaking them off. It's a pretty easy concept, though. So go ahead, like right, say, right there. The second he drops down, I'm hitting that pass. The second that linebacker jumps in like he's going to play the run, I'm hitting that pass. Next up, we got the Charger Vert out. Play, you just gonna you can run it just like this, or you can motion them out. Um, typically, what the idea is behind this play. Um, if it's a cover, um, if it's a uh, cover uh, two, the drag route will will basically expose it. As you can see right there, he's just kind of sitting on that. He gets he fumbles after he catches it, but you can see he, he makes the play. If it's a cover three like this, a lot of times you'll 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 get that play long before. You know what I'm saying that was a bad throw, but you can see you can get that that reception long before the coverage gets there. Let's go let's do that again. Now it looks like we have another cover two. If I had to guess anyway. Like I said, we're going to wait for that guy. He's just going to hesitate and then boom, we're going over top. Fumbled again. Like he's getting lit up, man. Keanu Neal's just doing, making plays out there. But that's got nothing to do with the play. That's just Keanu Neal being a beast. So here we go once again. Cover two. I'm sorry, not cover two. Cover three. Or cover one rather. It's all good. Doesn't really matter because I'm making a big play is the bottom line. So that's the play. If it's cover three, I haven't really seen it. I haven't really done the cover three yet. But if it's a cover three, like this is probably going to be. Like I said, I'm just getting bad throws. But you can see what's going on. He's open underneath all of it. Let's just try one more time. Like I said, block the running back. That's pretty much all you got to do. And we're going to wait. Like I said, this looks like... You know, we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to fight for the jump ball. Like I said, I don't have the speed advantage out there. So can we get that cover three look? And we got it finally. So so finally got that cover three look. You can see what happens. Coverage drops back. Easy money. Next up we got the PA seam. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the B route. Now I got a high low with the A and the B route. A lot of times the B route will pull the coverage down, making the A route route wide open. A comeback route's gonna be um, your your most consistent play. Obviously, you know your your the tight end though it, it's gonna be up there as well. Uh, but you know you have everything you need really. That RB route's gonna pull coverage quite a bit. I said that comeback route, putting in work. 
Um, it's always going to be putting in work, and you know your drag is going to be another safe check down, if needed. Like I said, here's man. Anytime you got man, though, that comeback route's going to be the beater. Next up, we got the power O. Now they're going to flip the play. We're going to run this to the shallow side, and I got myself a fullback, although he did nothing. <coughs> Either way, we're going to flip the play. If you want to do a fake motion out to make your opponent think the play's going that way, it's not a bad idea. Although, it set me up there because they, <laughs> the computer shifted. Not always going to happen in, in real life or in the, in the game. Uh, oh, oh, man, I thought I had. I was past that guy. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. I said, there we go. He kicks out. Now I'm uh, running free. Running free. So a real easy play. I mean, obviously everybody's gonna think you see three tight ends at the placement over there. Um, so hitting it with a with a reverse is a pretty good trick in, in my book. Let's go ahead and do this one more time. Like I said, this dude here. I mean, my my pulling guard isn't really doing me any favors, but you can see it has it has a lot of ability, or a lot of capability to be a big play. So let's move on. Next up, we got the ace wide receiver stretch. This play here, all I'm gonna do is put uh, put Y on a drag. Um, and you know, this is just, it's going to steal under cover three. Uh, that's essentially the idea. It used to be a home run play against cover three, but they, but they patched it. Um, if you motion him out, he'll also do a pretty good job of, uh, getting under even more. You'll get more yards out of it essentially, because you can see he drops back into that crossing route and it'll get you a nice catch and run. If you have a fast tight end, it'll give you a nice catch and run. Other than that, um, you know, the, the, the B route crossing the field. Is, uh, is a really good route as well, especially when it gets all the way across like that. I mean, that's going to be good against cover three, cover four, you name it. Um, but, you know, those are probably your best two options on the play. Um, you know, I, I keep forgetting the pass block, the running back. But, uh, but like I said, I mean, that's just, you're going, you're going underneath or you're going over the top. That's pretty much it. Underneath to the tight end or over the top to the B route once he gets across the field. Next up, we got the PA Experts Cross. This play here, I'm just going to put A on a drag. If it's a man coverage, the uh, the B route's going to have a lot of success um, because of the way that... Well, actually, the Y route, too. I mean, he's just wide open, so I don't know what. Maybe there were blitz in there. Um, <laughs> but your crossing routes typically don't have a lot of success this year. The, the man coverage is pretty overpowered, but you can see you can see how the... Um, you know, these routes are a little bit different. They, they the, the more times that they have um, little hitches in it like they do this guy's just getting forgotten completely but the more hitches they have in the route the better they are against man coverage so they these have like several throughout the course of the route this is why they get open um but yeah i mean the y route especially is just getting forgotten quite a bit here let's go ahead and let's see if that continues like i said those crossing routes are going to be really good against zone as well outside oh man i had a touchdown there i really i really put on some jukes there and had and ha would have had it play's probably gonna be best run against cover too because of the angle that these guys are taking but i mean it's just they're running so fast the zones just they just get sat on you know what i mean and you can't use it between them because you got to choose you know what i mean so you're really not gonna who are you gonna choose i mean they're, they're both getting open on each side next up we got the close pa cross the natural cover cover four beater so all i want to do is pass back my running back i have some good routes crossing the field uh, but i'm really just waiting for that x route to clear so i can just throw it up over the over the safety there um, really simple i mean all you're really doing is uh, i'll go to the replay i guess all you're really doing here is waiting for this guy to get inside of this guy and then he's just, you know, that that safety there can't catch up. None of them can. So I'm just going to pass lead away, throw it, run it, and catch it. You know what I'm saying? Pass lead it to the outside, away from this this safety, and that's all I really got to worry about. Next up, we got the halfback toss crack. No adjustments to be made. You get a, a good seal on the edge here, though. Um, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of times, I mean, I'll take what's there. I, I could have tried to swing it out for more, but I'll take five easy right there. Um, although ultimately, you know, you're, you're trying to get big plays here. You want to try to bounce it outside. Here we go. We get good blocking. Uh, can I get the speed? Oh, that's right, baby. That was a real tight look right there. But like I said, you can see, obviously, this has really big play potential. Go ahead and I'll run it one more time. Uh, but like I said, the blocking setting up pretty good. As you know, I, I don't know if maybe I just didn't follow it really well there, but I saw some really, some really good potential there. 
Barrel Eyes Beers one more time. Like I said, that guy, he just chips on, and then they pass off really well. Uh, and then I'm just running for my life on that particular set. So, really good run play. Next up, we got the Halfback Zone Week. So, you know, this is the same setup where the motioning, uh, the motioning fullback comes over. Um, it's just, you know, it's a little bit of a different play. It's not a counter play. It's just an inside zone play. Ready. Pretty good setup. These inside zone plays are pretty good. Uh, when it's a man, though, you can see he pulls an extra defender across, which isn't necessarily the best idea. So this might be best used to run against zones. But you can see I'm getting, you know, a couple yards every time, four or five yards every time. It's just a good inside run play. I mean, you gotta have you gotta have inside run plays to match the outside run plays. And then ultimately I'm trying to bounce it outside anyway. But you can see there's pretty much always a lane there. That's the idea. That's all that really matters. So let's go ahead and let's get that lane one more time. Like I said, I'm I'm, I'm always gonna end up bouncing it outside, but I'm getting daylight inside. That's all that really matters. So good run play. Next up out of the single back bunch base, we got the Z spot. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put my B route on a streak. I can also put this guy, the, the, the square route on an in route or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But basically, I mean, if, it's, if this guy's open right away, I'm going to work my way back. If he's open right away, I'm going to take it for a catch and run. Put your fastest guy there possible. Um, I didn't necessarily do that, but I always recommend it. Um, and then, like I said, if he's not open, a lot of times the guy, you know, he, if he's covered down low, the guy above is going to be open. It's going to be that slant route or that outside post route. So that's pretty much your read. You're reading high and low. One of them is going to be open pretty much every time. Just take it. Don't ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it to nothing that you don't need to be. Other than that, the B route sometimes can get open up the seam of cover two. Um, but this guy's a good cover two play outside. It's a little bit safer, the inside. The inside cover twos don't really work as well this year because the safeties kind of converge in the middle. Next up, we got the halfback counter. So these counter plays, I mean, this one here, you got a little bit of a motion fullback going. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit uh, different than other counter plays where you don't have that motion, but it's a nice it's a nice addition. As you can see right there, it definitely helped to spring me. Uh, you know, it might give away the play a little bit if you run it too often, um, but you know, it's a really good play either way. I mean, the counters this year are really really nice. And it's pretty much ensuring that I'm going to take it outside pretty much every time. Right there, he crashed. You know, he actually totally blew the block. But um, it's the same setup as any counter. If if he if he crashes outside, takes himself out of the play, I got to go inside. If he crashes inside, I got to go outside. It's that simple. So like I say, right there. I mean, he got blown up enough that I get the edge, and then I'm just basically spring to the edge every time. Next up, we got the halfback slash. I like this run play. I just feel like you can you can cut back on this run better than like a regular dive because it just you just kind of get a good acceleration from the actual slash i don't find it's best to kick it out wide but it's definitely best for a cutback as you can see right there i mean it's just a real smooth transition to get five yards good inside run <clears throat> next up we got the pa end around this play used to be really glitchy and i don't this thing this is gonna get blown up because i essentially have a, a all-out blitz coming uh, but you can see, I mean, the running back is really the play. I mean, it wasn't all out blitz. It still worked out, though. But the running back is typically the play for a good catch and run. Nice fake end around. Looks like they, they unpatched it. I don't know if that's the way to <laughs> way to term it. Right here, obviously, the A route is going to be a better play because like, they were sitting on that that you know, that you running back a little bit. But it's good to see that this play works again because they really broke this not too long ago. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. Like I said, that all those... All those um, Play fakes that might get you in trouble, but you can see the running back. They used to make it the running back just like he was covered. He was always covered. Now he's getting open again, which is really cool. Let's go ahead. Let's do this one more time. The B route there is open too, as you can see. He turns up the field, but you can't really see him. But it's an interesting wrinkle that they added. It wasn't really there in the past where the B route was an option. So here we go. We got a blitz. Hopefully, I can get away from this. Canceled it out. Like I said, I'm taking off because the running because the quarterbacks can run so fast now. That's their third option is to take off with the QB. Super cheesy throwback. So like I said, right here, we just take off, turn that turn that running back upfield so he uh, takes the coverage away. So a really good play. But nine times out of ten, the running back is going to be the play. 
uh, because he's just really, you know, really glitchy play right there for the running back. So easy catch and run play for the running back. Moving on. Next up, we got the quick pitch. Uh, if you can run just like this, I mean, in the past, I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, he got lit up there, man. Like he punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but, yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. Here we go. Here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh, man. Just got to hold that block down, man. Just got to hold that block down. So I'm going to try motioning out this receiver just to see... You know what the difference is and you can see right there i guess i got a little bit better a little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver so we'll do that one more time like i said he backs off a little bit which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver's always been so successful for me is it, is it backs away the cornerback and then we get a nice big easy run we're gonna do that one more time motion him out and then, like I said, it just helps me to get to the edge. It's not always a huge play, but you can see I got much more than I did before. So motion in the mount. Like I said, cornerback drops off. And it's going to make it easier for me. And I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat, that Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker. Son of a bitch. It's like right here. He dropped down, so I know I'm probably going to have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no, he, uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see it's a much easier run play. With um, with the motion, which matches a lot of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway, <laughs> so you shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time, just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh man, come on, bro. That dude, he just he's just playing lights out. He's really disrupting some things. <laughs> Motion over the wrong guy, but it doesn't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. It's the same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next up, we got the Seattle. This play here, I'm going to put uh, put more on a drag. If it's a cover two, um, that drag will come in handy to pull coverage back for Samuel. This whole play is really about the B route. Um, although the RB route and the A route will get open, you can see this guy here just, got, just gets open way way more to the outside whether it's cover three cover four um it doesn't really matter here's a cover three or a cover one if it's a cover one i'm hitting a home run if it's a cover three um i'll know right away because the cornerback drops back and then i'll just hit him underneath if i make a miss i can i can take it up the sideline you know it, it's a scenario that can play out um i could also put uh, this kind of drag like i know this isn't a cover two so i can put him on a, a slant if i want um, this might be a cover one. No, it's still not. So they keep hitting me with cover threes. Um, so, you know, but that's like stealing candy from a baby. I mean, it's just so, it's so easy. So easy. So here we go. We're going to do this again. Like I said, this might be a cover two. But obviously not, though, because the cornerback dropped back so far. Um, it's a cover one. That's an interesting look. <laughs> set, if it is a cover one, Samuel's going to be a home run. Um, these inside routes, I, you know, I forget about them, but... Oh, here's a blitz. There we go. So, I guess that's easy. <laughs> They're going to send a house blitz like that. You're going to have a lot of openings. So, I had to pick a cover one because they're not going to give it to me otherwise. Um, this is pretty much going to be, you know, just going to wait till he turns up the field. And, you know, you can bullet, lob, whatever you want, as long as you get separation. You didn't catch it there. I mean, it's a pretty good cornerback covering my receiver. Um, but you can see he's going to get passed pretty much every time. Next up, out of the single back wing stack, we have the halfback stretch. I find this play's best. If it's a man coverage, run it as is. Like, this is a man, so obviously there's no cornerback out here. But if it's a zone, I find it's best to run it back towards the receivers. If you can flip it and run it just like this, you can motion over a tight end and give yourself an additional blocker. Although, obviously, this is a man coverage, so I'm breaking my own rules, but I just wanted to show you that there are uh, ways to get blocking advantages. Um, you know, typically, like I said, when it's a zone. So right here, this looks like a zone. Like I said, I can just run like this. I don't have to give away the, the, the way, you know, where the play is going by, by motioning over a tight end, which that can sometimes give away what's going on. But it's an option. So like I said, right here, we got a man coverage. Let's take it to the man side. You know, there's there's nobody out there. There's no cornerback out there. You know, as I get knocked out. <laughs> the ball gets knocked out, but that's the play. 
Next up out of the single back dice slot, we have the halfback toss crack. I mean, he's just going to, you know, this receiver is going to come in, seal that edge, and then a lot of times, I mean, you just have daylight. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is just real easy. And, I, and I'm going against a 3-4, so I actually made the formation a little bit heavier than normal. But you can see the potential. So it's going to do this a couple times. Like I said, he just, he just really, I mean, that receiver really clears out that linebacker. And uh, it's just like nothing but space. And like I said, I, I have, they have a bigger formation than I do. So it shouldn't be that way. But uh, nothing really to this play. Just, you know, hike the ball and you're basically sprinting outside. Like right there, I mean, that guy spun off that first one, made it a little bit of an issue for the next, for the next blocker. But the way this hole can set up can be pretty amazing. Um, you know, it's typically inside, it's typically not to the outside like you would typically think a toss play would be. But it's typically right in this gap, and that's not going to happen here because <laughs> that safety is going to probably mess the whole thing up. But he didn't. Look at that. It picked it up without without a flaw. I said, very impressive. Very impressive play. Here we go. One time, cover three. Like I said, he'll turn that dude back. And I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just sprinting in the field of flowers, man. Like, there's nothing around me at all. Really good play. Next up, we have the uh, PA boot. This year, I like the motion over Olsen. This is going to be a nice, um, you know, play to the sideline. That's the idea. Is he's going to get open under a lot of coverages. I forgot to cancel the play action, though. I'm going to cancel that pre-snap. Uh, but you can see, I mean, against, you know, cover two hard flats, he's not necessarily going to beat that route the same way. But um, you can see uh, against most other things, he's going to beat that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not like a man. Uh, but you can see right there. I don't know if that looked like it was a man. Still kind of beat it. He had to hesitate on it. I prefer a faster guy than Olsen. Although he's good enough. You know what I'm saying? He's definitely a good tight end. I just, I would like some speed to run this. Like I said, it's it's all about catching it and turning up the field. You can see he doesn't do that too well. Still good, still good play though. Rather a worse tight end who's fast at this in this type of play, in this type of scenario. He's not even fast motioning across the line. That's how slow he is. So, like I said, cover, uh, I don't look, look, almost look like a cover two. But you can see the, the route's getting open against most things. It really doesn't have too many issues. Cover two hard flat would probably be the biggest issue. And this will help to get more open, too. You know what I'm saying? Like his route, a lot of times, you know, look, at, look how, how, how more, you know, cooks that up, that up top route. So you really have more than one option here. Here go, here go. I like putting this guy in, in, in a flat too. If you're gonna leave it like this, it. a lot of times he'll get open in the flat, but he's not. You know, and almost like the way that that linebacker, that that defensive end came out, almost looked like a screen play, like a one-man screen. But without a doubt, the best one is is motioning also. Motioning the A route is gonna be the best option. It's gonna be the best look. And we got a man coverage. Can I beat him up the sideline? Yes, I can, but I couldn't get gone. But still, but like I said, man coverage definitely going to be definitely going to be DJ Moore in man coverage. Olsen in just about everything else. Uh, like I said, other than cover two, cover two hard flats. It's going to be the biggest issue. And like I said, I wish I could just turn him up field a little bit better with the throw because it's still. I mean, he's just wide open. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the point. He's a wide open route. One more time, like I said, Olsen. Can he? He's too slow to even motion across the line. That's how. That's how poor this poor man is. So there we go. Oh wow, behind throw and it still worked. But yeah, man, he was just. I was just seeing after days. That looked like a cover two. So you can see how your cover two route right there. More. He's your cover two. He's your man beater. Olsen's your pretty much everything else. Like I said, it looks like another cover two. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. And we got a big play touchdown. So. Next up, we got the halfback sweep. So I would flip this play, motion over this guy. As long as it's not a man coverage. Like right here, it's a man coverage. In this scenario, it would obviously be better to keep the play as is. I got to motion him back, though. You know, which you know, might not, you might not have time for the game. But I'm going to motion him back. Like I said, now you want to run it like this. If you know your opponent's running a lot of man coverage before you call that, this is obviously going to be the best way to run it. Um, you know, run it away from the extra defenders. But if it's a zone, obviously motion him over. Like I said, there we know it's a man now. <laughs> but I'm just going to run it anyway. Because like I said, it's still a good play even if you make that mistake. Say you don't have time, change it. It's still a good run. You see about 10 or plus, 10 plus. But I would like to get 
a zone coverage so I can so I can show that one time at least. You know what I'm saying? I'm motion snapping too, which you know you're not always gonna do, but it to me it's obviously better against man. Here you go, here you go. Yeah, this play is uh, really essentially just a cover four beater. Um, the best way to do it, put uh, the X route on an in route and then put the X route on a uh, smart route. And then I also like putting uh, Olsen here on an in route um, for a check down because he helps out a little bit with pulling uh, pulling coverage um, for the safety. Like I said, we're really just waiting for him to get past. And you're not going to get like you know a huge separation, but you'll get past. That's the point. Gun, gun, gun. So let's do this again. If I could, I'd put all on the slant, but I don't think they have that ability anymore. You just have like check and releases and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I could also put them on a streak. Let's see how that helps pull coverage. Throwing window. You know what I'm saying? It just gets a little bit. It just gets you more of a one on one look rather than a, a two on one. <clears throat> but then you don't really have a check down. So it's really up to you which one you want to do. So I cancel that play action as quick as possible. I should probably take it away entirely. And I said right there, I man. It's just, you know, it's a tight throw, but you're going to get it. You're going to get past That's the bottom line. Ready, 20, I have covered four beaters that are, you know, a little bit better than this one, but as far as separation, but at least you have one in your book. So it's hard to complain. And like I said, I mean, I don't know if Cam Newton doesn't have the arm. So while this can be a home run play, I'm just not going to say that it's, you know, the separation is not necessarily there. That I would necessarily want on every play. Right there, you can see that was nice separation. No, no hand fighting there for the ball. He just has that space. So timing's really key. Next up, we have the halfback counter. This play right here, I'm going to be reading this outside defensive end. If he crashes outside, I'm going to go inside. And you can see how big of a lane I have. If he hesitates, I'll go outside. But typically, he's going to crash outside, which gives me a big inside alley. I'm trying to wait for a scenario where he hesitates. There it is. So, like I said, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just shielding on him. So here, him being out so far is typically a good thing, um, but he hesitated. Uh, so I still had to go inside. So it is what it is. You're, you're gonna see I'm pretty much an inside run. It looks like an outside run. A lot of times you can take it outside. Like I said, if he gets if he gets jammed up because he hesitated, then I can take it outside. But eventually, I'm always gonna bounce this run outside. Next up, we got the Saints misdirection. This play is going to be best against cover two, cover two man. Um, you know, you basically you're reading. You got your three levels of passing, and then obviously um, the the deepest one's going to get past the cover two safety. That's the best option. And then you got your underneath route as well. Sure doesn't let me snap the ball as quickly as I want, but either way, it's like it's all about the B route. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like against cover two, it's gonna beat that outside safety pretty much every time. <coughs> Not a lot of scenarios. I mean, if it's cover three, your red route there, the um, the X route is gonna be okay, but it's too cluttered in a cover two. And then against man as well, I'd say that this B route is gonna be uh, gonna be pretty good. But against man. The, uh, the X route's even better. You know what I mean? Like, that's your man route. Somebody's running cover two man or cover one man. You know, if, it, if, it's, if it's cover two zone, obviously your, your B route. But if they're running cover one man, this 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 little shake and bake thing is going to get open just about every time. And then if it's cover three, your fullback's going to be the best option. I haven't motioned over Cameron Payne. It doesn't let you do that. But in any scenario where it's cover three, he's going to be the best option. So you got your you got your cover one, you got your man, which is this guy, your cover two, which is the the, the, the furthest receiver, and then you got your, your cover three, which is the fullback. Next up we got the Saints halfback zone. Here you go, here you go. This player essentially operates like a stretch. I mean it looks like I'm in a man coverage, so I'll have the best option to just run this outside uh, right here. I forgot to put my running back back and then I got lit up on top of it. But um, I mean that's you know Really simple run play. Uh, you can flip it if it's not a man. You can flip it back to the receivers and it'll probably be the most effective. Um, unlike stretch plays though, it does kind of pull you inside. And you kind of... It's not necessarily the most effective stretch play, but if it's what you have, it's what you have. And you can see, I mean, it's obviously giving you really good blocking. 
So, one more time, like I said, pulling me up into that alley, like right there, there's a huge lane, so I have no issue being pulled into that lane. Um, but you don't always have that. Sometimes you got to bounce it outside, and the way that the play is going is it kind of fights you on that a little bit. Um, but like I said, it's also, you know, the, the inside lanes are pretty effective. It's pretty effective blocking. Definitely a good play. Let me say right there, if I flip it back, it shoots me right for that gap that was already there between the, the linemen and the receivers. So it's a lot easier to run that way based off of the, uh, the way that the, the handoff is played than it is to run the other way. Like I said, I mean, obviously I want to run it that way from time to time, but it really helps out to run it in the direction that they're suggesting. If I had a faster guy, if I had McCaffrey in there, I probably would have been gone. So like I said, big gap over there, that's, that's the gap it's shooting for, so I might as well, and sure enough, I mean, that's just easy mode. Like I said, if I had McCaffrey, I, I might be going on these runs. Next up, we got the halfback toss. This is a play, once again, you can use this a lot like a stretch play. Uh, I like to flip it back uh, and just go weak side because the cornerback's already inside based off of the fact that there's no receiver on that side. So he's, you don't have to motion anybody in. If you want to get the edge, it's one thing. But me personally, I think it's best, um, you know, just to, just to take this and just sprint to the outside. As you can see, McCaffrey just putting on moves. But like I said, if you want to try to try to maintain that edge with that receiver, it's not going to make the play less effective. I mean, it's good either way. It's good to either side. So it really doesn't matter. It's really up to you which side you want to run it to. Next up, we got the spot option. This play right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put X on a streak. That's all I really need to do anyway. I mean, I can, you know, I'm going to split the field in half here and get the bunch. That's essentially my, my call. Um, and I'm going to work the, the, the short route back. If the short route's there, I'm going to take it, catch and run, no questions asked. If they try to take away that short route, a lot of times it'll lead to the, uh, the, the route behind it being open. Right there, they took it away. Okay, fine, I'll go over the top. It's a real simple read, high or low. That's all it really is. Now, as far as man coverage goes, uh, the Y route obviously is going to beat his man coverage. None of the other routes really are going to beat their man coverage. Next up, we got the fake screen. <coughs> this play here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put A on a drag, and that's going to work to get this um, get Samuel here open on a deep play. I mean, you really have a couple of different routes crossing up here, uh, but you can see, I mean, this is just, I don't know, I think that's a cover three, but you can see he gets it, he gets it right in front of the cover three corner. A couple different... Um, a couple different looks here. So let's go ahead and let's, this is another cover three. So once again, I'm just gonna gonna dot this up outside the defense. You know what I'm saying? Like this route is really that's what that route does. It's gonna get it outside. It's nice to have that effect uh, with that Y route without actually having to do anything. Like right here. Like typically, I gotta motion a guy or you know do all kind of stuff. As I get the touchdown, let's go. Typically, I gotta motion a guy to get that effect, that cover one, that cover three beater effect. Where go, go, here go. I don't have to do anything. It's already built into the play. I got that right at the line of scrimmage. Um, and it's really just a lot of it's just pass leading to get that play outside, you know, get that throw outside of the linebacker. Uh, but this is going to be a nightmare for cover one and cover three uh, for sure. You know what I mean? This is not something that you're going to want to see. Uh, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, cover two might work too. Right there, I had to wait a little bit, to turn up the field, but really good play. So here we go, one more time. Right outside the defense. Easy money. Going ahead and we're going to move on. I don't really think I need anything else on that route. I mean, the drag would be the would be my next option. If that didn't work, I'd probably take the check down and move on to the next play. Although B, obviously, um, you know, because of the, your, your opponent's going to be focusing on the outside, so that, that middle route should get open too. Next up, we got the PA curls. This play is pretty specific to cover to cover one man or cover two man, and it's really just gearing at this uh, this tight end route. Um, on the other side, I mean, you can work the other side with zones, but it's pretty easy. If you have a man, it's going to be A. If you have a zone, uh, you can really work it to the other side. As you can see, this route really just destroys um, destroys man coverage. And then if it is a zone, I mean, you're just working your way back the B route. Um, it will come open under it a lot of times. You can get a catch and run, uh, you know, whether it's cover two, cover three, anything with hard flats, really. Ready. 
Definitely cancel the play action if you're looking to work the zone side because it'll mess up your timing for the quick throws. And then, you know, without a doubt, like I said, I mean, the, 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 you got that. I mean, that's a good route going across the middle there. The other two routes are a little bit trickier to uh, to, de to decipher what's really the play. Here go. Here go. Um, you know, a lot of times this guy will sit in the middle and just get, get sat on. You can see right there. I wouldn't recommend throwing it to that route nine times out of ten, but there will be times where he gets left Ready. uncovered. And in there's scenarios, then you'd have to hit him. Next up, we got the verticals. The only adjustment I would say make is put Olsen on a drag motion out more and that's pretty much the play i mean he has that same effect that's a that's a you know that that uh that route i've been using quite a bit it's going to be very good under cover threes if it's cover two you're going to see this effect uh, where you get a really big play accuracy is a little bit of an issue like i said i threw it too quickly there if i'm going to run this play i probably want to run it from as far to the left of the line of scrimmage as possible so go ahead and we're going to do that again. It looks like it's going to be a man. If it is, I'm just going to hold it until he turns upfield. And we're going to get a big play. If it was a, a little bit faster, maybe he'd be gone. Like I said, might have a man again. Let's take a look here. Oh, we got that cover too, which is, like I said, you know, that's why you're dragging that, that tight end route. It's going to be just as big of a play, if not more, as, as, a, as a cover one man. So here we go. Looks like they might have somebody coming in. I'm gonna go ahead and block my running back, just in case. And it didn't work anyway. They got, they got right through, but it was, and I would have had a touchdown if I could have blocked it, or if my running back could have blocked it. I should say. He's the one who let me down, not me. I didn't do anything. So here we go once again. We're just gonna get outside. Like I said, I'll steal that all game. You know what I'm saying? The linebacker won't go that far, but my receiver will. My quarterback will. So here we go. Looks like he's coming down. We've probably got a man coverage. Or a cover two. That works too. Got hit, but I made the play anyway. Through the contact. Through the hit. So next up, we have the cross drag. So here we go. We got a guy blitzing. That's all right. You know, like I said, we're, we're just basically working our way back from the short routes to the deep routes. That's essentially how this play works. If the short routes are there, take them. If not, you'll just keep working your way back until you get to the deep routes. Uh, the man coverage is a lot tighter than it has been in years past, so it, it, especially on crossing routes. So a lot of times, that'll take those plays away now. Uh, but, you know, against zones, it's still the same concept. And the drags, if it is a man, the drags still, still, they still work. <laughs> so that's all you really need to know. So just a bunch of crossing routes. And mess up man cover or mess up zone coverage. Uh, if it's a if it's a man Ready? coverage, you just Ready? gotta hit those Ready? enemies through the drags. <laughs> Typically, hit the drag with your fastest Ready? receiver. Would be the best idea. Next up, we got the pistol bunch te. We have the HB zone, halfback zone. Ready? So we're just gonna flip this play. Nothing else will change. And a lot of times we have a really nice inside run. This is a really popular run from a couple years now. Definitely not my favorite route or my favorite uh, run out of this formation. Uh, but you can see it's very successful as I get 15 yards right through the teeth of the defense. I mean, they had that line stacked and it still got through. So, you know, without a doubt, this is, uh, to me, you, you can really get some big runs behind receivers. I don't understand why, but that's just how the game is. We'll go ahead and we'll do it one more time. And we're just gonna we're gonna pick our way through, get about five six yards. Just probably shouldn't have got anything. My patience is what really what really worked that out. Uh, but like I said, I mean this this you get some tight defenses like this, and you can still get plays out of it. Next up, we got the spot option. This play right here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put X on a streak. That's all I really need to do anyway. I mean I can you know I'm gonna split the field in half here with the bunch. That's essentially my my call. Um, and I'm going to work the, the, the short route back. If the short route's there, I'm going to take it, catch and run, no questions asked. If they try to take away that short route, a lot of times it'll lead to the, uh, the, the route behind it being open. It's right there. They took it away. Okay, fine. I'll go over the top. It's a real simple read, high or low. That's all there really is. Now, as far as man coverage goes, uh, the Y route obviously is going to beat his man coverage. None of the other routes really are going to beat their man coverage. Next up, we got the strong prower. 
Only if you know there's no guy on the right side there. Obviously, it's a man cover, so I can go ahead. I can run it to the to the to the weak side because there's there's no man corner out there to hold down the edge. So that's one scenario that you can uh, to keep it as is. But if it's a zone, which is obviously doesn't look like it's a zone once again, um, you're gonna want to cut back from behind the wide receivers. So like I said, we're gonna try to get one zone here. Hopefully, we get the blocking like right there. That was just a minefield that the defense was trying to run through. And sure enough, we get a, we get a nice big carry. So definitely, you know, a good play. Run, run stock Ready. against man, Ready. flip it Ready. against zone. Real simple. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.